like you've never heard it before. tonight. Well, I only got uh, an hour and 54 minutes left to go. All right. Okay. What are we going to do? Um, again, once again, girlfriend is not here this week. Uh, she is ill. Uh, and uh, she, well, she just doesn't, you know, we, this is the eighth week she hasn't been on. And I get a lot of messages and so on from people saying, where is she? We want her, you know. Where's Marjorie? And I go, there's part of her that just doesn't want to come on, and the excuse is usually sickness. And uh, many times she is ill, uh, but uh, it seems it's, it's, a, it's something she especially gets on, on Friday nights. But let's not blame her for not being here, because then I will, have to, I will have hell to pay. There, let me turn up my mic. There we go. Anyway, so uh, I sit here for the first half hour of the program with uh, nothing much to do. Let me see here. Where is it? Is this thing working here? Is it? Oh, there we go. Okay. See, I mean, I, uh, um, uh, I have to look over here to make sure that everything's up and working and so on. So I have to figure out something to talk about for a half hour, although, I, I, as I always say, chances are good that I might go to the, uh, to the Skype lines early so as to uh, avail myself of not having to talk as much. I'm having a slight breathing problem today. I don't know what it is. I don't know what this thing is I've had, but uh, two doctors have not seemed to figure out what, what the hell is wrong with me. And it turns out there is probably nothing really wrong with me. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it could just be something as simple as the pollen out there. And even the, though the hay fever index is only medium today, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to be affected by it. That if it's something like grass or whatever and I'm allergic to grass, you know, I'm going to have that problem. So anyway, I'm, are you tired of hearing about me being... <coughs> <laughs> well, there, I coughed. I don't normally cough with this. Anyway, let me uh, see that. Let's see. Uh, uh, let's say uh, <clears throat> halls. Um, Sugar-free. Sugar-free. Number one, I don't want to get cavities, and secondly, I don't want to get diabetes, and, you know, you should know that sugar is not good for you. All right? All right. So when I thought about things to talk about, I... Uh, one of the things that I that I that I can talk about. Where is it? Where was where was it? Uh, oh, I got rid of it. Hmm. Why did I get rid of it? Let me go to my. Um, where is it? Trash. Here we go. Trash. And then I got to go get something that I put in the trash that I shouldn't have put in the trash because I wanted to mention it to you. Here we go. Here we go. This is, um, this is something that was written. There's a thing called All Access, which is a, uh, uh, a newsletter on, um, on the Internet. And um, it, uh, it, 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 it's all things doing with radio. There are ratings there, and there are news items. And even once they interviewed me a long time ago, I think they've since forgotten that I exist. But anyway... Um, and they, they just wrote something today, and I thought I would mention it because it, it has to do with my business, which, as you know, up until a few years ago was radio, and now it is whatever this is, okay? And it says, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, the pace of change in radio has been pretty noticeable lately. Just this week, Tom Joyner announced his successor, WXRT Chicago icon Terry Hemmert 
uh, decided to end, oh, uh, he, his successor. Then WXRT Chicago icon Terry Hemmerd, I never heard of, uh, decided to end her decades-long air shift and more intercom air personalities and staffers were deemed expendable. They've been getting rid of a lot of people on the intercom stations. And then Cumulus, which is, I'd like to say a big organization, but it's an organization so big it has nothing but one financial problem after another. Um, Cumulus sold another of its big sticks, which is uh, WABC here in New York, which was, it's a, it's a big station. It, it really is. It has... Um, uh, 50,000 watts of power on AM. I mean, it was a powerhouse. Uh, and uh, for years, when I was at WMCA, for instance, we competed against them in the rock field. And then when they went talk, we were competing with them in the talk field. But anyway, uh, they sold uh, uh, WABC. They had previously sold WPLJ, which was another station they owned here in New York. This means they're getting out of the New York market completely because, quite frankly, they need the money because they're up to their neck in debt, all right? Uh, it, was sold, it was sold to a guy. I can't remember his name now. Casamatis or something like that. I should remember his name because I, maybe I could hit him up for a job. Uh, but this guy, Casamatis who owns Gristiti Supermarkets here in New York City, uh, he, uh, he bought, bought it for, get this, now this is a 50,000 watt station in New York City. You know how much that used to be worth? I can't begin to tell you. Well, I'll tell you what it was worth now. Something like 23 million is what he bought it for. That's not a lot of money. And the question is, is it worth 23 million? Because today, radio stations are um, less and less important, especially with the advent of the Internet and podcasting and so on. I mean, let's face it. I mean, it, it, what's being done on podcasts, to me, is not as good as what was being done in broadcasting, especially when st stations were competing heavily against each other. This was before consolidation and, you know, one person owned like eight stations in a market. Now, this guy, Casamatis, or whatever his name is, the guy who owns Gristides, is going to be doing something that is uh, different in the broadcasting business today because I said, do you hear what I said about eight stations? For instance, iHeartRadio in, uh, in New York City has something like eight radio stations, what they call a cluster. Uh, I call it a cluster radio fuck. And uh, what a cluster is is that Instead of thinking of yourself as one radio station where you go out and you sell the time for the radio station, you think of yourself as these eight radio stations, and then you have people on the street selling the eight radio stations. Um, and so if you've got eight stations, then maybe you, can, maybe you can make a living out of it, okay? Cumulus only owned two stations in this market. They owned, the, the, well, no, they owned one other, too, and I can't remember what it is. But they owned WPLJ, and they, which was one of the big rock stations, and they owned WABC, which had at one time been one of the, the huge talk stations, all right? Uh, and um, th so what, what happened is this guy is buying a radio station, but he's, he's kind of like the Lone Ranger. Rather than owning eight other radio stations to go out and sell time on and to sell a cluster... He owns one radio station. Uh, God, I hope he doesn't have to sell the supermarkets. Um, I hope, he, I hope he, he can make it go. I hope he can bring radio back. I hope he can do the miracle job. I don't know that I would uh, take on that task. I don't know if that's possible anymore. What we've got now is radio stations are... God, I don't know. Do people listen to radio? Do any of you listen to a radio station? And if you do, why? You know, I mean, you know where I bet you listen to radio stations is in the car. I don't think you ever listen to radio stations sitting at home. Very few of you. Uh, but in the car, there you got a place where, well, you got all these radio stations, so I may as well listen to them. However, now cars are coming with uh, internet built in. So now you can go and get GabNet in your car if you want to. Or you can take your, uh, you certainly can take your um, um, 
iPhone, have TuneIn, play it through the, uh, through the radio, and you can listen to GabNet's 24-7 feed. I mean, that's an example. Nobody listens to our 24-7 feed. Nobody listens to GabNet, okay? I just do this because it's something to do till the grave captures me, all right? So anyway, um, um, uh, th there is no, the radio is really not a factor any longer. And so someone who even buys a, a station with 50,000 watts for $23 million is really, I think, buying something that's going to be interesting to see if he can make a living out of it, okay, or if he can make a profit out of it. Um, what you might want to try and do is just simply break even, but I don't know if you can break even with some. It's really difficult today, is what I'm saying. Because you're also competing against the Internet where there is this a plethora of podcasts. Now, no matter what anybody sells, there are only a few people in the whole wide world who make any money off podcasting. I certainly don't, and I don't expect to. That's why I don't have any commercials and I don't sell time. Uh, and uh, this is kind of almost a hobby with me at this point, okay? But it allows me to keep doing something, and I, I don't know why I do it. I mean, I really don't. Uh, but the podcasting is really, you know, there are some good podcasts out there. I'm not going to say there aren't. Um, there's a lot of them being done by professionals who are, figuring out a thing to do for the internet that people will want to listen to. But by and large, there are so many podcasts out there. How many are there? I think, what did I hear at the at last count? A um, couple of million, maybe, podcasts out there? Uh, and, you know, I mean, something like Spotify, there are, there are 20,000 podcasts. And I don't know how many podcasts are on um uh, uh, iHeartRadio. We're, we're on iHeartRadio, we're on Spotify, we're on uh, TuneIn. Uh, where else are we? Uh, we're also on, we're on one other too. I, I got a whole, I got them all listed at the top of my GabNet page. I, I for, I've got so many of them, I've forgotten them. Uh, let's see, we, we're on YouTube, of course. TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Vimeo, Spotify, uh, and um, we're, we have our Roku channels. We have, um, we have the GabNet Roku channel and GabNet TV channel, okay? So uh, anyway, what I'm saying is, is that there, there's so much out there that it really, there is no broadcasting business any longer. To begin with, broadcasting means broadcasting. Uh, the internet uh, and podcasting is really considered what we used to call narrow casting, okay? And there's nothing wrong with it. I do my little show, and for the for the maybe thousand people who who, who frequent our podcast and our videos, uh, it becomes something that they enjoy. All right. Uh, and if you enjoy it, fine. And if you're enjoying it, I'm happy that I'm doing it. But all I'm saying is this guy's buying a radio station in a day when they probably had a hard time selling it to begin with. They finally found somebody who was willing to buy it. And I, I take my hat off to this guy. Oh, wait a minute. The glare will get to him. Uh, you notice when I take my hat off, the light changes in here? Look. Can you see that? Oh, anyway. Um, so, uh, you know, I wish him the best of luck. But I, I'm, not, I'm not holding out great hope for him or for his, uh, his uh, thing. So anyway, uh, that's the state of the broadcasting business. And, uh, you know, I mean, am I old-fashioned by saying podcasting on the whole sucks? I mean, let's face it. Anybody can do a podcast. When anybody can do a podcast then you're gonna get people doing podcasts who don't know nothing about entertaining and know nothing about doing a program. And you know what my problem is? I'm a radio guy. So what I'm doing is I'm not even doing a podcast here. I'm doing a radio show on the internet because I don't know any other way to do a show. Uh, and um, uh, how to get an audience doing a podcast has completely eluded me. 
I have no idea. Let me turn my air conditioner up a little, down a little bit here. Let me see here. There we go. I want to get a little, get a little cooler in here. Yeah, this new air conditioner is working great, by the way. It's just, it's doing the job. Um, well, let me turn it off and then turn it back on because I, there we go. Okay. Are you going? There we go. Okay. It's going. And let me turn up the, uh, let me, yeah, let me give it a little more, a little more fan. Anyway, uh, that has changed everything in here, though, because I'm not sitting in here baking and sweating and so on, but I'm starting to feel a little toasty. Because when I start doing the show, I start feeling toasty. All right? Here, let me turn the fan on all the way. There you go. You can hear it kind of in the background. Anyway, so that, you know, I, I, uh, I, I, I just, uh, you know, I have no idea how you get an audience on the Internet. I have no idea at all. All I know is I've been doing this since 1989, maybe? No, no, 1998. I've been doing uh, podcasts. Uh, and, uh, um uh, you know, I I should know how you get an audience doing a podcast, but I don't have any idea. And I was the I was the first guy ever to do what is technically called a podcast. But I'm not going to get into that because people are going to go, "Oh, well, no, isn't so and so first? Didn't he do it? No, he didn't. I did. 1998, and uh, I did it every day." Um, it was called Alex Bennett in Exile, is what it was called, because I just lost my job, and I decided that I would just, on the Internet, do a little 15-minute show every day, and people could just tune it in. And then some guy I knew who was a techie said, look, I just built a program called Auto Alex, and all these people have to do is install this on their machine, and then every day it will go to your site and download the program, and then they can come home and listen to it. What does that sound like to you? There was nobody else doing that, by the way. Nobody. Absolutely zero. N zilch. But do you think anybody says, hey, we're having a, a big uh, big internet uh, podcast blowout. Alex, please, we'd like to give you an award for having invented this whole thing. But no, no, no. Nobody even knows I fucking exist. All right? Please don't feel sorry for me. Anyway, I'll tell you, you should feel sorry for. Well, I don't know. If you have to feel sorry for him, I feel sorry for Joe Biden. <laughs> Man, he got his hat handed to him by Kamala Harris last night. I mean, she made him look so fucking bad. Oh, the lights dim when the uh, when the fan goes on. All right, that that scared me for a second, but. The lights always kind of dimmed when I would turn the, uh, the uh, uh, what do you call it, on. Anyway, uh, where are we? Let me see here. Let me also turn off the uh, uh, energy saver. Let me see here. How do I turn that off? Oh, I go to cool. There we go. That'll just keep it working. Okay? All right? All right. All right. That scared me when the lights kind of dimmed, but they were they always dimmed when I turned on the air conditioner, and it was just this one hasn't done that. So the fact that it did it in cycling through or whatever to do the energy saving thing and turn on the fans kind of kind of was weird. See, if, let's see if I turn it off. Let's see what happens here. There, I turned it off. Now I turn it on. No, no, it just uh, it was just a surge that happened when, when it was changing fans. Anyway, I got about five minutes left here. Anyway, I felt I, I watched that and I just said, Joe Biden has just lost the nomination. And, and really, I think he did last night. I think the minute she did what she was doing and what she said and how she approached him uh, and, and his lack of ability to respond, uh, I think was pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Anyway, I, I'm going to go to the phones early. What the hell? Let me see here. I hope I don't lose my electricity at all. Hold on a second. I just want to see if this uh, air conditioner is putting, putting stuff out here. Uh, oh, I see. I don't want that. I don't want that. I, I don't want economy. 
I don't want, uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, see, you can do this on the internet. Stop a whole program just to turn your, your stuff on and off. There we go. Cool. And uh, I'll turn the temperature down. Let me just see here. Are we okay? Are we all right? Okay, let me see here. Let me, we'll just, we'll just hope that it's, uh, okay, anyway, that, that, that should do it, hopefully. Um, I don't know, I'm getting obsessed with the air conditioner. It should work. Uh, but anyway, um, let me see, you see, on the internet, I could do that. You know, because people go, oh, he's going to fix his air conditioner. And I could show you the air conditioner, but I didn't want to turn, I don't have to turn on my camera. Well, wait a minute, hold on a second. I got a, I got a deal here that's really fun. Uh, let me see here. Uh, let me see here. I go on here. And if you people are watching me and not just listening to me, you can see what I'm about to do. This is called NDI, Okay. Uh, and uh, let me let me let me for a second. Let me just make sure that I'm, I've got the right. Uh, no, you see, I'm on, I want to get onto the, uh, onto the uh, uh, Wi-Fi here in the office. Okay, and then uh, I take this and I turn this on. Wait a minute, and let me see here. There, there we go. Okay, I got it. I got it. All right, I don't want to, however, I don't want uh, to, um, oh, oh, I see, it just turned itself on again, okay, anyway, let me see here, if I go to this, all right, okay, there we go, uh, you can hear me from across the room, but there, there's the new air conditioner, folks, and uh, isn't she a beauty, yeah. I just hope that she doesn't. Oh, there's all the other stuff that we have here in the studio. And um, here's the thing I use to run the show and all of that, okay? So I just thought you would be interested in seeing that, okay? But I, I, I still want to see something here. Hold on a second. Let me go back over to the air conditioner and make sure that it's, uh, you see, it's on high and it's not on auto. How come it turned itself on? I have no idea. Anyway, that's it. Let me go back to here. Let me get rid of this. Okay, there we go. And uh, I'll turn on the, uh, the Skype, which will take a second here while I, while I double click a couple of things and get Skype going. This is what happens when I don't have my wife here. It just becomes a boring diatribe. Anyway, there we go. Okay, I think I think we're fine. Uh, Skype green light is not on. Of course, it's not on yet. I know that because I haven't turned it on yet. Now, there we go. Are you happy now? Okay, I don't know who sent me that note. The Skype light is not on now. Okay, here comes Phil, and uh, let's see here. Uh, who else? Somebody else tried to call. And, uh, uh, hmm? How you doing? Yeah, I know. There, you, there you are. Okay, yeah. there you go. And um, am I hearing Charlie somewhere? Uh, no, uh, I had the uh, feed oh, on on okay. the other computer. Here comes Rob Alfano. Uh, and I will have to I will have to get him into the uh, number one spot here. Hold on a second, Rob. Uh, I mean, hold on a second. Everybody's calling at once, and it drives me into a panic. Okay, there we go. There's Rob Alfano, and uh, here comes Charlie Wallace. And I think he was in the number two slot last night, wasn't he? So he should. He yeah, should. there he is. Yeah. See, there he is. There he is. Hi, everybody. How are you? Hey, hey. All right. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. 
I heard you so, talking about uh, WABC being sold. I um, I am re- I think that is awesome, and I think radio is finally going back because the reason why it's not viable today is because of all the debt these radio stations incur. You said he paid twenty five million. I heard twelve point five million. Maybe 12. maybe maybe you, or twelve point five. Oh, yeah. then you guys could be I right. I I thought I. I know you sent me an article. I, I had seen an article earlier in the day. Uh, I thought it was 23, but if you say it's 12, I believe you guys. It is 12. Yeah, yeah it's 12, 12, 5. And I think at that price, he can invest some money in some local talent, get rid of the damn infomercials that he's running, and do a great radio station the way radio companies did before they got to these... He's bailed, he's bailed out other things. There was something in that article about him bailing out somebody for three billion dollars. Uh, it was some other, no. It was another. Uh, it was another uh, uh, grocery store chain. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and uh, I'm trying. Yeah, he, he bailed them out three billion. Yeah. Or three point one wow. billion. Yeah. So, so uh, no, 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 no. He has three point one billion. He bailed them out for much less than that. He owns. Oh. He has. He, he has three point one billion. Grissons or something, something like that. I never heard of it. No, 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 no. It, it's a, it was a main, a major uh, uh, grocery, grocery chain here in New York. Yeah. 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 Okay. So maybe he just, that's why. He just heard. folded that into Gristides, and Gristides is probably pretty. Uh, I mean, come on, uh, supermarkets going out of business? I don't think so. Gristides you know? is like a little. Um... No, it isn't little. It's, they're, it, they're big. Well, I mean, but the stores themselves are not like superstores, like you know, where like they're, Safeway. They're uh, pretty large. I mean, when I went to Gristides in my neighborhood, I used to think of it as the supermarket. You well, know, uh, the last Gristides I was in was, you know, it wasn't like your old-fashioned Pathmark or Wallbaums or one of the big ones, you know, from that area. You know, uh, it's still a decent store, but it was more of yeah. a specialty kind. Of, I thought they had like nicer, more expensive. They were in nicer, ex- more expensive neighborhoods. Well, what he's going to have to do, what he's going to have to do with this chain, I mean, with this, with buying uh, this uh, this station, is he's going to have to find some way to make money out of it. Because if you're a single owner of a single station in a market. Uh, that's very difficult these days. Well, because is it because, or is it not? Well, Think about he's, it. he's given them something that nobody else is no, giving no, them no, right no, now, no, which is no. iconic retro radio. No, that's not it. You don't know what he's going to give them until he does that's it. That's what he said he was going to well, do. Well, no, he didn't. Go he, back to no, the no he, did, he didn't say that. I read the articles. Yeah, I he I, didn't I say thought, I thought I heard that, too. He's going yeah. to go do... Go back to the roots of radio. The roots of radio, yeah. meaning live and local. Yeah, that's right. But what I'm saying is the problem you have is that today they, they, they have, have like eight stations in a market, like, uh, you know, iHeart, okay? And then they sell that as a cluster, and they make money off the cluster. And they don't... But they can't, yeah. but they can't, they can't invest anything in the... Like, Cumulus had to sell PLJ and ABC because they're in such debt. They, they took some of their biggest properties where they can get money for them still to pay down that debt. If he comes in with no debt... Well, now he's got this 50,000 watt clear channel station that he can do a, you know, he could put a nice format together and bring some people in and not worry about the fact, you know, that I worked in a, I worked in a, in a, what was at the time clear channel cluster and the station I worked on did very well, but it was absorbing, paying the bills and all the stations where they weren't making any money. And, and so they would siphon the shit out of whatever we were making at our station and, and we suffered for it. So if, if he can, doesn't have that debt, he can slowly build a radio station the way well, he, he does have a de- he does have his, a debt. his advertising well, for Christides well, just went down he's got his no, own radio no, station no, what, I'm, what, what I'm saying is is that he he still has a debt I mean he well, bought this yeah, thing for 12 um, million dollars who cares What's if it's cash point? it's money that it cost him and he's got to make that back or or he's running at a loss. Well, but cherries, cherries are going off sale. You know, the, you, that, it, you already Alex. went to those jokes. You're through with them now. No more grocery <laughs> store jokes. But think about it, Alex. If he could get a decent drive time morning, drive time afternoon, and bring in some cash and and pay a guy, pay a couple of people some money to to do real local radio and maybe make it a full service station, 
he could, I, you know, that's New York City. Well, but, that's a 50,000 watt signal yeah, that's heard yeah. so many places but, around the but, country. But what, really. if, but what if you can't? You know, what well, if, it's, you it's know, a finding, finding a hit morning show and then taking the time to let it brew and steep yeah. and, and, be, and, yeah. and be known in the market is a good three year investment that might not ever pay off for you. Okay, so yeah. the question is, I'm going to ask you this question, okay? $12 million ain't a lot of money in today's world. If you right. and I heard that WABC was for sale, we maybe could go out and convince some people to put up the money for us to buy WABC, all right? Would you buy WABC? Well, I don't know anything about have- radio. You yeah. have to have again. You have to you have act an like idea you do. <laughs> I, I know Look, people. I, I know people who do. Yeah. WFAN fifty thousand watt AM station mm-hmm. makes a shit ton of money doing t- sports talk, mm-hmm. and they are live twenty four seven, and they do updates. So they got an update person and a, and a and two and even three yeah. hosts for every shift. But my question is, were they a hit from day one? Well, FAN was the first ever sports station, and it was a different time. It took. It but what I'm saying is, it took a while and an investment to let yeah. that thing steep and gain popularity and right. whatever. And now, of course, I mean, if if I were to start a format somewhere and there wasn't one in a market, I would start a sports station. No question about it. That's yeah, a major wants, format. Though. Yeah, there's he already said, two in New York. He we're not talking says, about what he wants or doesn't want. We're talking about what we would do. Oh. So so right now, hey, WABC, when they were big, they had Limbaugh and they had Rush. I, I mean, they had, uh, what's his name, uh, Trump's best buddy there, uh, the other big. Hannity. Hannity. They had Limbaugh. They had, so when they first went on the air, after they switched from music, they switched from music to talk in 1981. And they went on the air with all of the syndicated programs that were originating from Los Angeles at KABC. Mm-hmm. And the station tanked. Then mm-hmm. they brought on Bob Grant, yeah. I think, yeah. in the afternoons. Mm-hmm. And Bob Grant is what they built the station around. Yeah. Bob, yeah. Bob, they, you know, Bob took off, and they started getting all these other. Lo, Rush was a local host at WABC before he went national. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Hannity. He was a local host before he went national, and he was on WABC. And they had, I think, uh, who's the psychiatrist, Dr. Laura? By that time, I think she she was on for a while. They had a lot of compelling, uh, you know, talk that on that station. It was conservative talk, um, but I I don't know. You know, with with really, I mean, already he's got debt, but he doesn't have the kind of pressy. If you hired, if you said, like you said before, Alex, if if you said if we can convince some companies to go out there and buy the station. Mm-hmm. Now you got a company that's going to want return on their investment quick, and that's where you run into trouble. Okay, but, if you run yeah. it yourself, yeah, and you've got money behind you, which this guy obviously does. Yeah, it's his own. You, know, you could take the time. To here's build it. here's the problem. Here's the problem. He has not only bought a radio station, which is not the world's greatest investment today. I think you'll <laughs> agree with me on that one. But he's bought an AM, not an FM. Right. You know, so uh, but you know why it's not a great investment because of what it, corporations have done to radio. There is yeah, still nothing. And, like and I agree with you that you know you and I say bring back the old radio. You know, like this guy wants to bring back the. The fact of the matter is, have we gone beyond that? Has has the major part of the radio audience matriculated to a, po- a podcast? Have they gone to? If they're not a podcast, are they more? Are they Sirius XM? If they're not Sirius XM, are they are they uh, FM? You know, the last place they're going to look for radio is on AM. That's why he only paid twelve grand, twelve uh, million for it. Tony looks like he's agreeing with me. Yeah, I quit my job today, so I'm happy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look at that smile. <laughs> I left in the shithole in the back, too. Yeah. Don't buy my boxes. That's all over what I left. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm sorry, what radio station can you talk about? Who got bought? WABC. Oh, they did? Who bought them? 
The guy who owns Gristidi's. Yeah. He's really? a supermarket. Supermarket. Well, what do you think he's going to do with it then? Is he going to change the format? It's going to be talk no. still. But. I, I, who knows? I mean, it probably will be. But, you know, I just don't think. I, I, I just, you know, it. it's a hard go. I mean, he's going to have to do a lot of advertising. Yes. He's going to have to do a lot of promotion and publicity. He may spend another $12 million doing that, you know? And he's got to think outside the box. He can't, you know, when we say bring back old radio, what I mean, what I mean by that is live and local. I don't mean necessarily old time radio. I mean, he's got to think, he's got to provide something that you don't get anywhere else. Yeah, how about a citizen panel format? Well, that yeah. would be awesome. That would be. That would be. I awesome. mean, that's that's different. That's new. It's a new way of doing things. But think about it. If we technology. did the citizen panel on WABC or any commercial station, it would change a lot. It'd be very difficult to do this long form. Well, I, I, you know, I for a while I was thinking about trying to pitch this idea to radio stations, uh, even offering it up for free. But the, the, here are the problems that happen. Uh, first of all, I went over to um, WOR to do, um, to do uh, uh, New Year's over there. I think I also did one other. No, I just did that one, okay? I just did New Year's. And um, uh, I'm doing the show, and all of a sudden, Albert, who's my producer, on that show. It was the last time I was ever on radio anywhere. Uh, except for when I've done, you know, uh, substituting for Walter Sabo. Um, uh, he said, we've got to go to a commercial break. So we went to a commercial break. Mm -hmm. A seven-minute commercial break. Yeah. And how many of those were there in the hour? Yeah. Four. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Four seven-minute commercial breaks and wow. so when i thought about taking this format and doing it there or doing yeah, it on hard. any station how do you do that when they're running seven minutes worth of commercials do i then say to you guys well go to the bathroom or do whatever you're going to do or do we continue the discussion and just say welcome back we've been while you've been gone we've been talking about such and such that was my plan but still it it, it makes it impossible to do this kind of format or to do something unusual and different. And well, let me you know, ask you this: Do you think that you could really do? do you think you think that if you went on a fifty thousand watt radio station that's now being governed by the FCC and not you know a podcast that goes over the internet, mm -hmm. you'd have to you'd have to figure out a way to do a citizen panel with topics that are a little bit. It, it would change the tone. Mm -hmm. Of the citizen panel, don't mm. you think? I don't know that I would structure it any differently. I think that I would do it the way we do it. Okay, but here's the thing. Let me, let me let's take it a step at a time. You've got this radio station. You bought it for twelve million dollars. First of all, you got to figure out what are you going to put on it. You know, and and what talent are you going to hire to do it? Because they don't have the talent there really. You know, there are some people doing programs there, but a lot of the stuff is syndicated and brought in from out of town. So where do you find the talent that can man a station like this in this day and age? There is no training ground for it. Well, New York City is the, you know, is one of those places where there's still going to be talent. Uh, so it's it's not like you're doing it in you yeah. know, the middle of nowhere. But the, the, are... yeah. But you know, the question gets bigger and that is that once you do it uh, how do you let people know it exists? And how do you draw people to it? Because what you've got to do is before you can even start to figure out how you're going to handle the commercialization of it, you've got to be able to get ratings so you can sell time on it. Okay? Um, and I think that that becomes the biggest problem of it all, is, is to be able to... I mean, my, my dream would be that we put a radio station on, we take it over, it would become so big because our, our, our talent was so terrific, right? And when our concept was so strong that everybody was switching from the internet and switching from FM and switching from Sirius XM and going over to listen to my AM radio station, yeah. right? 
But wait a minute, let me finish. Let me finish, Tom. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me finish. Uh, and 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 that I'm going to do that, and um, uh, then because I've got such huge numbers for this little station of mine, uh, I can then not have to sell seven minutes worth of breaks, but I could charge more for all the ads and say run two minute breaks, but charge a fortune for them. But I have to get to that point. And the fact that I would get to that point may be a pipe dream. Well, a lot would change in that most of the citizen, all of the citizen panel except you, mm -hmm. isn't, wouldn't be able to listen to the station. Well, we'd probably simulcast it on the Internet as yeah. well. I mean, any radio station that isn't simulcasting itself on the Internet is nuts. Yeah. You know. I'm sure WABC, well, WABC, I'm sure, is on, is on the Internet. Yeah. They are. So, you know, there are other places people can listen. But and that doesn't, well, it does. Uh, I know that um, CB, the former CBS stations, that's WFAN and all that, they separate their Internet and their, um, they, when they do the ratings, yeah, the ratings yeah, are separated. Example, yeah, that's a whole thing between. I'll tell you though. I'll tell you. I'll tell you though. We could use a model that somebody else used once. Uh, there was a guy you may have heard of. Him, his name was Ted Turner, and he bought a cheap, low-powered uh, UHF station in Atlanta. And what he did was he knew about this thing called the satellite. And he decided to take his TV station, put it up on the satellite, then sell it to cable systems. And you may remember it. It was called the Super Station. Yep. Uh, and he changed the whole way business was being done. In other words, it, didn't, it got to a point where I think he didn't even have this UHF station on the air anymore. It was just going all over the country via the satellite. That maybe is one of the ideas that you could come off with. And that is that you take your, your radio station and you uh, put it up on the Internet. Or maybe you even convince somebody like Sirius XM to carry it on one of their channels. You know, you find as many different yeah. places uh, to disseminate your, your, your station uh, than just the traditional, hey, everybody tune into our stick. You know, and, and I think that's maybe how this thing could, could wind up doing well. Yeah, uh, but you still, it, it needs to serve New York City and the area. And that is what's going to, you know, right now, if there's a, there's that, well, you got two news stations in New York City. But in a lot of places, you don't have that anymore. You know, you, you leave the big cities, and if there's a disaster or if there's a weather situation, those stations are unmanned. There's no news departments. You don't, we well, don't. If there, if there were a tragedy here in New York, like 9-11, Good example. Yeah. Uh, all those stations that iHeart has in New York probably wouldn't be able to cover it or cover it for the most most part of the day. That's right. Because they aren't, you know, they've got no live prepared. staff there. They're not prepared for it. That's right. You know. Um, so I mean, but the question is, can can you make money off of it if you're a local station anymore? I mean, it really. He if he if he wants to be pure about this whole thing. He's taking a very big risk. And I, I still, I'm going to hold on to the fact that since he doesn't own all of the debt, these stations, what what did Cumulus pay for the two ABC stations in New York? When I they would, bought I them? would imagine it was several hundred million. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So the debt that they have was choking the shit oh, well, the out thing of is, Cumulus. Uh, yeah, iHeart was going around, as you may remember. Uh, buying up everything that wasn't nailed down when it was called right. Clear Channel, right? Uh, and and I, they and, and they I created this for... serviceable debt that was so huge there was no way. They, and they right. went bankrupt, by the way, and they just got pulled out of bankruptcy. Cumulus went into bankruptcy. It may even still be there. You know. Yeah, they're trying to service their debt. That's why they're selling all their most of their major market stations. Yeah. Yeah. Just because that's their value. That's so this the value is this property. is what's happened to radio folks. You know, it, it, when people when people said to me, "Oh, you know, boy, uh, radio is uh, it, 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 I love radio." Oh, we're sorry to see WPLJ go and everything. I went, "What radio? 
Yeah. You know, radio doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah. But it, I think, and I said this 10 years ago, because I, I was at the number one station on Long Island. It was a full-service FM adult contemporary station with a news department, a good news department. Mm -hmm. They were known all over Long Island. If there was anything happening, you tuned to the radio station, and we were there, right? Clear Channel Bottom, it didn't change for a few months, and then slowly but surely, they started cutting away the news department and cutting away, saving money. This station was still billing like a son of a bitch, but they were taking that money and funneling it away from the radio station. It is today, it is no longer iHeart or Clear Channel. It was sold again because they did some uh, other acquisitions and the FCC made them sell some of the stations. So they sold this station off. And now it's a former show. It's still number one, but there's no news department. There's nothing but a morning show and an afternoon show and the rest of the show, the rest of the day is all computerized. We were live and local 24-7. I left there in 2005. It was still 24-7 live. Hmm. And and today it's just like a couple of shifts a week live. If you own the station yourself and you can afford it, I think you can put people back on the air and, and communicate with people like only radio well, but can. The question, Maybe have the, locally. You know, the question we, is, the question is uh, Rob, in this day and age, people have gone other places now, okay? Right. Uh, you, you would have to compel them to come back to radio. Now, of course, I make a big uh, sales pitch for radio when I say that when you listen to this Internet program of ours, yes, it, it, you, you're lucky because we don't have enough listeners that we're putting that big a strain on YouTube or on uh, the Internet. But the fact of the matter is that bandwidth is not cheap, okay? And everybody out there who's listening to us right now is you listening to one stream. Mm -hmm. And if somebody else is listening, now two streams are being used, and then three streams, and then four streams, and then five streams. And if you want to serve out, say, a million streams, that's pretty expensive. Right. Now, let's talk about radio. You put up a stick, you send out a 50,000-watt signal. We could get a trillion people listening to that one signal, and it wouldn't cost us one penny more because right. everybody's going to be able to listen to the same stream. Okay? And that's the big difference. And that's what was great about, what's great about radio. It can also be picked up... Uh, uh, while you're driving around, it's a lot easier to get a hold of, you know, all those things. But yet, nobody's selling that. What's happening to Phil? Well, We're only seeing the top of Phil's head. The, the, the issue that you have, too, is that the kids today don't know from radio, so, and they certainly, I don't care what you put on, they're not going to listen to AM radio. So no. what you have to do is you have to you have to attract. It has to be unique. It has to be compelling. It has to be it has to it has to go after people probably over 35 years old who still remember radio. Have you seen the guy who's doing it? Have you seen a picture of him? I have not. Uh, do you see any way this guy can be compelling? Uh, well, I, hopefully he's got some people that he's talked to oh, who has oh, some ideas. Uh, yeah. All I'm saying is. That to be compelling takes a while. It takes experimentation. It doesn't happen overnight, you know. Uh, and um, uh, I, I don't know what the answer is here. Yeah. But I, 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 I wish him all the success in the world because I would like to see him have it. Um, that's the part of me that wants to get even with radio, that wants to see him be successful, you know. But I'm, I have my doubts that he can be in this marketplace. And, yeah, there's his picture. Yeah, yeah he's an old man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean... Uh, it, but I, I don't think he's going to be programming it. I think he bought it. I think he has, uh, he's got a you consortium got, you, no, of people. No, he, he does a radio show that's on several yes. stations around the country. And uh, I think he thinks he knows a lot about radio. Maybe. You know, he may be the kind of guy who'll come in and he will hire people who are good at what they do and then he will micromanage the entire place. I mean, we don't know if that's going to be his downfall, you know. 
Could be. Now, if he goes out and tries to find people who know what they're doing, and I'm not saying I'm one of them or you're one of them, but there are people out there, and he lets them do what he thinks has to be done, then uh, I think there's a chance he could do okay. He yeah. needs to hire some people who understand social media, who understand uh, that he, he, you can't you can't hire a bunch of old people, just old people. I mean, you need people with uh, new ideas, mm -hmm. and if you don't have new ideas, then you're the same old, same old. And otherwise, how are you gonna? How are people gonna? Yeah, that's the other thing: is people knowing you're there because who's mm -hmm. listening to? Yeah. AM radio. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If I don't get more people tonight, I don't know if I want to do a show Monday. Okay? This this is the like the, th the th uh, third night this week. We've only had four people here. You know? And uh, I, I that pisses me off. Summertime. Yeah. It's Friday night. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna be gone what was next it? Week. Huh? I'm going to be gone next week. So I can count on having two people. We're, we're not going to be on. Uh, we're only going to be on two nights next week. Um, so, because you know, it's uh, that Fourth of July. Yeah, Fourth yeah. of July weekend. Shit. So yeah, more people right. better start calling right now, okay? Otherwise, I won't even do a show Monday and Tuesday, you know. Uh, but you know, so, Phil, you've been quiet. What have you been doing? Yeah, Phil. Well. Looks like you've been pissy about something. No, he's designing or something. Your mic's not on, Phil. Can't hear you. Uh, yeah, I, I've just been doing uh, work stuff. Well, uh, then don't call the show. Okay. Uh, you know, I, uh, you didn't want me in on the conversation. No, so. I didn't say I didn't want you in on the conversation. You know, you get pissy like that, and you're like no, a little no, child. Hey, I, I said something. Tony you're, said you're something. like a fucking child. You didn't child. want me on a conversation. What, Here, what do you I mean? Won't call the show. What? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. He's hmm? like a diva. He's a diva. Yeah. He's like my mother. I'm going to set them up. Hmm? <laughs> I can call Phil dad soon. <laughs> can I have a loan? <laughs> I'm, I'm so pissed at him right now that I could just say, don't ever call me back again. You know? That would hurt him. He's still mad you never went to his wedding. Huh? I can't get rid of that. But you didn't go to his wedding. You had yeah. a reason. You were on yeah. TV. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, if you don't include him in the conversation you're yeah. having, he gets all pissy. Yeah, I didn't think he, yeah, he you know, gets a little moody sometimes. No, not a little moody. That was wrong. You know, I yeah. and I wasn't saying don't talk about this. No, but uh, you know, he was just a so, like huh? Talk. What? Maybe we hurt his feelings. Huh? What, what, what did we hurt his feelings for? Because we wouldn't take his expertise on broadcasting. I heard him say something about the fruit joke. He says no more fruit jokes. I was in. Yeah, I said, well, the I had it with the fruit jokes because it was enough with the with the uh, with the Gristidis jokes. Well, this is all we've got here, folks. Um, uh, so uh, anyway, uh, you know, I'm I'm getting to the point where I just you know, I don't know why we don't have more people. You know, we. Well, it is a Friday night. Maybe they're tired from work. Huh? It's right before holiday weekend or holiday yeah. week. Yeah, everybody. My work today was like so quiet. There were no emails going around. People are not focused on anything. But you know what? It's break time. <laughs> yeah. Well. It really was quiet today. You know, I was thinking about what you were saying with the radio. It's like I love the radio. Listen to the radio, the sports talk, and stuff like that, and music. I wonder. It's you know what it is too. I could be wrong, but. Maybe the younger generation, they're so used to getting everything instantaneous because of the internet and the phones and this. You're battling so many things now for an entertainment or especially media. That's right. And, and you're, like, battling for the, yeah. you're battling for the for the advertising dollar, too. Yeah, it's like, I mean, came on, years ago in the 80s, we, we always used to listen to the radio now. It's like with the phone, the, you know, tech, the iPhone changed everything. It's just you're getting everything immediate, or if you don't get it, you got to have them their podcast and go downloading it later. I mean, even the talk shows like Stephen A. Smith and them, if you don't catch the show in the afternoon, you can download it to your phone. And they have bits of interviews. There's so much out there. I think it actually don't be a good idea. Like, say your citizens panel, Alex, I mm -hmm. think a good idea would be maybe to sell it to like a cable station that's not doing like what a transponder. Maybe you got to do like Paul, uh, Rob said, locally. Instead of thinking outside the box. New York is so big. 
there's money there if you find the right if you find the right market for it. Yeah. Well, you know. Um, uh, let me see here. I'm trying to do something here. I just I just uh, wrote to uh, uh, him Is a uh, mad at you? huh. I don't, I, I, I don't care if he's mad at me. You know, I mean, I just, you know, I just, I, I, I think that uh, uh, he's, he's being a big baby about it. And uh, uh, let me see here. Where's my Chrome? I don't have any idea where my Chrome. Well, there it is. There is my Google Chrome. I just uh, sent him a, uh, I just sent him a, uh, a note on, uh, on, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, on Facebook. And I guess you can't see it there because they're holding because uh, I can't get down that low. I know how I can do this. Hold on a second. Here's how I can go down. I get my there we go. There we go. Uh, this is what I this is what I wrote him. Um, fuck you, you diva. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I just you know, I don't I I don't need it. You know, I don't need it. But uh, we'd like some other people to call to fill this place up. You know, that would be very nice of you, if you would like to. And we've lost Tony now to his, his curtains there and his um, yeah. wall. Just papers. went to get he went to get his soda. Oh, okay. But, uh, anyway. Maybe it's buried under a pile of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me see here. He just gave me the thumbs up. Okay. Uh, and I went, well, I'm not going to beg him to come back. Screw him. Screw him. What, what is this? An unknown person is calling. What is this? I don't want, if, if, you, if you're not, if you don't give me a picture, uh, I don't, uh, I don't care who you are. Uh, let me see here. Three. What do we got here? Uh, that would be this one, I would think. Uh uh, who is this, by the way? Allison. Who who is it? Allison. Who? Allison. Hello. Allison. Hello. Allison. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I. I okay, I'm I, calling. My name is Allison. Uh, well, I don't. I don't have you up here. As a um, oh. as a thing, I don't know. I I we we oh well. I don't. I really don't know which which is you here. It should be um, Skype. There's no picture of me. I know there's no picture of you. I wish there were. It would make my life a lot easier. Uh, well, you've seen me before, so. Huh? <laughs> There we go. Well, we, we have you. We have you as a uh, Skype logo, which is not really what we care to have there. But that's yeah, that's it. You know. But Allison, anything you want to say about any of what we were talking about? Well, I hope the station is brought back to the way things were years ago because I'm like a radio junkie. Yeah. And I love radio. Yeah, but I you, hope you get a show. Weekends with Alex. No, you see the problem the problem is, Allison, how old are you, Allison? Oh no. <laughs> no, up there. The reason I okay, up there is a good enough thing. That's the other yeah. thing we worry about because your demographic don't doesn't mean shit to a tree when it comes to advertisers. They don't nope. want you. Yep. So nope. if you would be attracted to that kind of a radio station, we got a problem. That's why there's no more oldie stations because while they were doing well ratings wise, you couldn't sell them because nobody mm -hmm. Madison Avenue or the advertisers don't want yeah. that demographic. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's too bad, but that's where but the money is. I was going to say, could they be wrong? Yeah. Maybe, maybe they're maybe they're underestimating the older generation. That could be a form of ageism. They got money. They're retired. They know the medium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That could explain why the radio stations are going under. Maybe because they're catering to the wrong age group. Well, the, the, the fact is that there is... Uh, advertisers do not like older demographics. And the reason they don't like older demographics is... Um, do you drink a sto soda, Allison? Yes. Uh -huh. You drink a soda? Like, uh, yes. And what do, you, what do you drink? What's your favorite soda? 
Usually Coke. Coke. Now, how long have you been drinking that, Allison? Since I was maybe a little kid, about four or five years mm -hmm. old. Okay. If some other soda came along and pitched itself to you on a radio station, do you think you'd change at this point? No. Okay, there's your answer. Yeah. That, that's exactly why they don't want you. Is because you're set in your ways. You're, you're, you know, you, you're the products you buy are the products that, uh, that that make sense to you, and that you want. You know, and um, uh, that that's why uh, a, a older demographic is not liked by the advertisers because they're not going to convert you. Right. And what does advertising do but try to convert you to their product? So they would rather have a somebody, some station with a young demographic where Pepsi can come along and see if they can get all those Coke drinkers to come over and use Pepsi. And because they're young, they might be willing to try it, especially if it's like, you know, Pepsi with uh, cocaine or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know. So. Cherry Pepsi. Yeah. Am I right, Rob? Am I, am I explaining this well enough? Yeah, and, uh, that's exactly right. And then, uh, even though the even though the demographic has a lot of money, yeah, you, you're right. They're they're uh, set in their ways. Oh, the demographic has a lot of money. I could convince any advertiser that that demographic has money, but I can't convince them that that demographic will change their buying habits because they're going to advertise on my station, and that's what the problem is. Okay. Anyway, um, so um, is anybody else going to call tonight? Is anybody else going to call tonight? I, I not but you notice, you notice the, the music. You know there's no more jingles today, right? When you watch commercials, mm -hmm. there are no more jingles for anything. They use old rock songs. Yeah. Everything is an old rock song. You're right. You know, so, Gary Marlowe used to write jingles. I used to like that. That's right. Stuff. Nobody writes yeah, jingles anymore. Jingles. Nobody writes jingles anymore, and and so, but so there's this recognition, and and the advertisers use this music that our generation listened to, but they still don't want the the people who. It's funny. Uh, are, it's, are it's they, sort of, it's well, weird. are they using that music because the people working in the ad agencies are old enough to remember that music, or are they using that music because they figure it's music they can use that's good? that none of the audience they're trying to appeal to ever heard before. I don't know, but you know... I don't know. Do you remember the old McDonald's commercial in the 70s? You deserve a... Break. That's iconic. I think that I think you had better writing there. I mean, I still remember a commercial. It seemed like... Barry Manilow wrote that. He Barry wrote Manilow. that, yeah. He yeah. did so many. The guy's a genius, eh? Alex, I know you don't like Barry. Barry Manilow's great. a fucking genius? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> Are you so out of your goddamn mind? I like him. I think he, well, I like how he wrote those jingles. I think that's cool. Then he's he, a talent. He did Coke, too. Hmm? He's he coming to Broadway now. No, he didn't do Coke. I think he did. No, he did. No, he didn't. If you Google it, you can find a medley of all of his jingles that he wrote I gotta on, do that. on YouTube. Yeah. He, I, I saw him in concert once, and he, he played them all. Wow. See? He I did all of his right. jingles. Yeah. A genius? No, no. Hardly, <laughs> hardly I'm, a genius. I'm sorry about that, but you know, and I, 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 have, I get upset by that anyway. When people call somebody a genius, without even thinking twice. I mean, if, if Barry Manilow is a genius, that's going to be a sad news for Einstein. You know, uh, we we tend to call things, make them bigger than they are. You know. Everybody today is a star. Yeah, you know. True. What are they doing? You see what's going on on YouTube? No. What? So YouTube is there. Yeah, you know, Google is getting all uptight, and what they're doing is they're uh, mm -hmm. demonetizing m many of their original YouTubers, the people who created all this content mm -hmm. that brought people to YouTube. I got a guy, a cigar guy that I uh, follow, I've been following for a long time now, and he's been on YouTube for 10 years. He's got one of those buttons because he's hit over a million subs. They just told him the other day, you're done. We really? don't want to, 
Yep, they told them you could keep putting videos up on YouTube, but we'll no longer monetize them because it's cigars. Really? And they don't want to monetize cigars, firearms, alcohol, and all these other things that they're getting away from. Yeah. Just like that, yeah. they just pulled the plug on these people. Yeah. Who were making a lot of money. They were making a living. You know something? We have a bonus tonight. We lost yep. Phil, but we got Mark. Hi, yeah. Mark. How are you? My God, it's all the whole week here. Oh, wow. Yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all home week. Uh, only we lost one of our homies because he became a diva. He yeah. is a diva. <laughs> yeah, right. He's mad at you. Yeah. Yeah. Probably pouting. Yeah. Well, I mean, he can go pout all he wants to. I don't give a shit. Um, you know. <laughs> he wants your blessing, Alex. I think he wants it. <laughs> you know. I, he may I, call. I've had it with him. I really have. You know. I just he did this the other night too. When he when we aren't paying attention to him, he immediately does something screen wise to make us feel that you know we we should pay attention to him. You know, and it's it's it was, it's rude. It's just rude. And, uh, you know, anyway, um, what else is there to talk about? Well, you know, I was talking about the debate last night, um, and we don't really have to, it's not a matter of getting into politics, but it is getting into what I think we saw last night. I think we saw the destruction of Joe Biden. Yeah. It was that bad? I didn't see it. It was that bad, then, it sounds like. Well, uh, Kamala Harris took him to the woodshed. That's what they're saying, yeah. You know, and, and effectively so. Did you watch it at all, Rob? Did you see any of the clips of it? No, I don't want to pay attention to it. Yeah. I'll vote for anybody but Trump's at this point. I just don't want to, I don't, it, it, it's aggravating to me. Your attitude is, tell me who the, the nominee is and I'll, I'll yes. go vote for him. Yes, yeah. I stopped paying attention. I will vote and I will vote against Trump, but... Yeah, and you're not going to vote for like a third party or anything no. like that because no, that would be I, giving your vote to Trump. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? The Mark? rest of it uh, oh. is. Mark, what do you think? You were, did you watch the debate at all? No, I didn't. They have everything to gain and everything to lose. Turn up your mic. Can you turn up your mic at all? Yeah. yeah? Huh? They got everything to gain, everything to lose. Yeah. So whoever the best person is at this point, and it's going to be an interesting process of elimination. Well, at this point, it's like a reality show. Yeah. You know, which is, is, is which is it kind of ruins our democracy, doesn't it, by turning it into a reality show? Although, has it always been a reality show? Uh, the, the minute um, Exploding Cheeto, as a friend of mine calls him, got it. <laughs> got into the White House, it became a reality, you know, it became a very bad uh, Mark Burnett show. Yeah. Um, but that's what we're stuck with now, unfortunately, Alex. Um, any good journalism, out the window. But look at look at the form it takes, okay? Uh, uh, l let's take these debates as an example. Don't they look a lot like American Idol? Aren't they structured like that? You got a panel with three people, and you've got these people who are up there doing their act, so to speak. You know, I mean, isn't it? It, it didn't it come off like a reality show, like a competition show? <laughs> well, for some reason, I know that maybe. Okay, I, I think Tony. I don't know if you would get this. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ted Mack must be spinning in his grave oh, right now. Yeah, Ted Mack. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, I mean, I'm surprised they didn't have people like, you know, do a dog act or something in order to get the most votes. I mean, it was it, it, it it's just that our demo, uh, it, it, it we, we television has completely taken over our national discussion and it's taken it over in a way that it imitates itself. In other words, we do a debate. It looks like a competition show. OK, um, uh, uh, and then the, the, before it happens, it's like you're like the lead up to a football game. And after it's over, it's like the Monday morning quarterbacking of the game, you know, and it it's it, it all none of it has taken on the form of just being 
part of democracy and what we do and how we elect people. Uh, and it has no dignity left, you know. So, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, like Biden was like a deer in the headlights with Camilla Harris last night. It seemed like, did it seem to you, Charlie, like he didn't know what he yeah. was doing? What I saw today, yeah. I mean, he just completely, I guess the word is lost it, you know. Uh, he didn't know how to come back from something like that. And I, and I, oh. huh? And, and I think the other person who got him, there was this guy, I can't remember who he was, because there's so many of those guys. He's one of the guys we're not going to see after a couple of weeks, okay? Uh, and he said to him, when I was growing up, uh, and we were talking about uh, taking care of the environment and everything uh, that, that goes with that, there was a politician who said, well, you need to toss, give the baton to a new generation. Yeah. And yeah. he said, do you know who that man was? Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. Joe, what do you think about passing it to a new generation? You know, and of course, he's going, well, I still got it, you know. And I got to yeah. tell you, I'm sorry. That man looks, he's younger than I am. And I know, I know, yeah, I know I'm not looking terrific, but I don't think I look as doddering as he does right now. I mean, and... The guy standing next to him, Bernie Sanders, is almost his age, is an old guy, and does and has a lot of a uh, lot of what can we call it? a lot of spirit, you know. Mm -hmm. He he he's not uh, falling apart. Uh, so wait a minute, let me get uh, Patrick in here. Okay, all right, we're getting the people now. We're getting. We're, we're, they're coming to the rescue. They notice that Phil is gone and somebody, they can come on and talk. Uh, hello, Patrick. How are you this evening? I am splendid. Thank you yeah. for asking. Yeah. Did you watch any of the clips today on the news of Camilla Harris with, uh, with uh, um, Joe Biden? Yeah, I did. But I, I wanted to say, I, in my heart of hearts, I would love to see Marianne Williamson or William get it because she is such a fluffy <laughs> so bad that when she said, Mr. President, if you are listening, I'll meet you on that field. And she was referencing love will conquer all. Yeah. Oh my God. I, that was, that I, was, I didn't hear that, but it might have been while I was doing the show. Uh, no, but was she inferring no. that she was going to blow him? No. <laughs> she said that she believed that the president was brain and the American people and that love will win out. And that, Mr. President, if you're listening, I will meet you on that field and love will win. Oh, love you know something? She, like, writes books like that. But it, she's a, yeah. uh, not a philosopher, but like a life coach, sort of. Yeah, it, yeah. It was the best goddamn thing I had heard in so long, and I laughed, and it was great. But anyway, getting back to Kamala Harris, yes, I did hear that. And the thing that I thought was interesting is the way that Biden wanted to come back right away, but his... He was so wussy the way he tried to raise his hand. It was as if he got fooled by her. And then he brought his hand up just a little bit up off the podium. And then they called him anyway because his name was invoked. And now I guess that was part of the rule. But I thought he came back all right mm -hmm. with his response. And I think part of what Kamala Harris doesn't understand or doesn't want to understand is something that has been discussed on this show at nauseum now is that things were different then and that's how you had to work and that he was not praising those people because they were racist. He was merely saying that we could work together despite mm -hmm. the chasm of differences 
which is not unlike the Republican Party now and the Democratic Party. I, 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 I do think, Patrick, that you're, you're, you know, I said this also at the time, but I think the thing that has to be taken into consideration is that last night he didn't turn around and explain that efficiently. He couldn't somehow make, it wasn't a matter of making excuses, but saying, hey, that's what you did to get things done, you know? And today we have people we don't like and who we disagree with entirely, but somehow it, we got to get them onto our side so we can get something passed. Now, if, it, it, but he didn't, he wasn't efficiently able to express that last night. And I think that if we're going to have a president, we want somebody who at least has a command of getting his point across rather than making constant gaffes. His initial statement about this was a gaffe, you know? Well, the, the, the thing that I think happened mm. is he did not expect her to personalize this because as she was talking, because I saw, I, I don't know if it was the way it was on a debate, Mm -hmm. But what I saw on some of the coverage today was there was a side-by-side -side of her talking, and he was not looking at her. He was looking straight ahead. And when she said, that little girl, and it was me, I don't think he was ready mm -hmm. for something so personal to be thrown at him. And how do you come back from that? Well, I mean, uh, the question is, how do you come back from that? And the, and the answer is that when they had the camera on him, uh, he, looked, he looked like he was ashamed. Right. And he you wasn't looking at her. And that's my point. And yeah. He looked like a kid that was getting schooled by their mother. And I think now, Kamala whooped his ass without having to do a whole lot. Well, I think she did it perfectly. First starting off by saying, I don't think you're a racist. And then, right. of course, she went on to prove that he was. <laughs> you know, I mean, but uh, I, I felt that at that precise moment, we saw the destruction of Joe Biden as a candidate. Oh, yeah. You know, and I can't think of after any, if there's any black person in America who saw that last night, and correct me if I'm wrong, Charlie, since you're the black guy on the panel, so you're our go-to guy, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but is there any way after last night a black person would vote for Joe Biden? Oh, I'm sure somebody would, but I, I sure wouldn't. I mean, do you think he lost a lot of, you know, they say he's yeah. he's, very, he's very popular with blacks in America. Do you think after last night he's still popular with blacks? No, he came up with the states' rights thing. He said, no, I wasn't against busing. I just was against federal. Well, I love how he put it. He said, I wasn't against busing. I was against the federal government involving themselves in it when it was something the states should do. And she had to point out to him that the, uh, uh, the equal uh, education bill for blacks in America was 20 years old by the time that came yeah. up. And that, mm -hmm. you know, why, why couldn't you make the government do something about it and force it into being? Yes, Patrick. Uh, I, I think those same blacks that lost respect for him last night, mm -hmm. they, if, if, I comes the nominees, they're going to have to change their mind or they're going to end up with Trump again. No, I will vote for Biden if he wins. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I but 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 first he's got to get the nomination, and I think yeah. this killed his chances. Of get, I think this killed his chances of getting the nomination. I, I think that's right. I, I want pretty early. It's still early, Rob. I, I grant you that. But it's early enough to fuck up bad enough that you're out of the running. Yeah. Okay. But you also you're comparing Joe Biden and his history against Kamala Harris and all these people who have really no history. And and we we've, we've said it over and okay. over again about uh, you know how how the social climate changes in this country and things that you say and do that are no longer acceptable today were acceptable when they were. What was mainstream is now out of fashion. So you're going to hold Joe Biden for things that he did, which were probably very mainstream 
which mm-hmm. are no longer. So it's the same kind of thing to me. I didn't watch the debate, okay. but I can only – it sounds to me like what you're saying is that you're holding him to something that he did 30 years ago. 30 years ago was a different time. Okay, But let me, let me proffer this to you, okay? We're talking about nominating somebody who can go in and beat Trump. I think that's the object here. Okay, there's no other object in this whole thing. It's not let's vote for the nicest person or the person with the best ideas or any. Let's vote for the person who, when they run against Trump, can take him to the fucking woodshed. All right. I think you saw the person who could last night. That's what I think Camilla Harris showed to America is that if that were Trump standing there, she could level Trump just as badly as she leveled Joe Biden. And that's why I think it looks to me like she perhaps is the best possible candidate. You know, that, 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 that's it, it, Do I make sense? What's her politics, though? How, how, how radical is she? Will she be able to pull people who are, you know, are her politics way to the left that she's going to turn a lot of people off who are afraid of that socialism thing? I don't know. By the way, Bree, turn your camera on, will you? Oh, I. I'm just waking up, Alex. Well, I hate to just have this Skype <laughs> logo sitting there. I hate Skype so much. That, Show it you know, the ceiling, Bruce. Do you have any photograph you can put up there or whatever so we don't have to see the Skype uh, logo? Um, how do I do that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> point, point it at the ceiling. Right? Yeah, just point it at the ceiling. Yeah, it's, point it at your ceiling. black. Fingers. We oh. looked at Tony fucking wallpaper, so we can look at <laughs> It's bad. Put a picture fill up. You can make it. <laughs> well, there we go. Okay. Well, we're, we're getting, uh, now we're getting his, uh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Well, we, we just get black, but that's okay. That's better than the Skype logo. Okay. Yeah. It's we already true. have the Skype logo once with Allison. We don't want it twice with you, Bree. Uh, but <laughs> you get what I'm saying, Rob, is that. Oh, yeah, I do. Think yeah. of this as an audition of. How are these people, if she was that way with Biden, how, how would she be with Trump? And my answer is she would take him to the woodshed. She wouldn't let him. She would be the kind that if he were hovering and behind her like he did with Hillary, she'd turn around and get back, go, get in your fucking seat and don't, you know, follow Is that him. just going to put him in his place or is that going to get her elected? I think, if, I think she has the goods to be able to say the stuff that's going to get her elected by pointing out his problems, you know, because he could be easily played by the right person, you know. Well, uh, yeah, yes, I, Brie. I felt that she, well, I, I don't know if this is possible, but she was a little bit too passionate <laughs> about everything, you know. Well, I don't know the people. If she were, if she were a guy. Are you saying Americans don't like, respond to passionate people? Uh, I definitely think that you know having the some emotional uh, element is good, but I just felt like she was loading everything into that. I, she needed to do it. She needed to have a a moment where she was able to raise her hand and say, "I'm here too." But um, you, do, I, I don't like people who who in order to get ahead they have to take down other people. Well, no, but, but you know, no, Bernie. But, but but you had to take down Biden because he was asking for it. Number one, because he's leading the pack just on the basis of being Joe Biden. And he had said things in the last week which uh, was a gaffe. And she wanted to call him on it. And I think he deserved to be called on it. Yeah, but next next debate, he's going to have some zingers to go back at her. I, and don't, she, I don't think he's and got the it. Whole thing is I, don't think he, the I, don't, I don't think he's got it in him to do that, to be honest with you. I don't think well, he's that. Then he will lose. You're I right. don't think he's that good at it. I think last night he showed that he was very weak. You know, uh, now you didn't see it, right, Mark? No, no. Not. And you saw it, Charlie. Did he look weak last night? I mean, just yeah, overall, yeah. forget Camilla Harris, but yeah. before she even went after him, did he? He looked weak. He looked worn out. You know, uh, Bernie didn't look worn out. Bernie looked like he was full of vim and vigor. You know, I mean, if Biden doesn't get the nomination, I think uh, what what is 
will he have a will to live? You know, it's <laughs> it's kind of like well, uh, that's not our response. Has... That's not our responsibility, right. Bree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I, 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 you know, I, I think that uh, uh, you know, Joe Biden has done been around been a liberal for all these years. I think he's done some bad stuff. I think, you know, the whole thing with uh, what's her name? Uh, Anita Hill. Anita Hill. Terrible. Just terrible. Uh, you know, the busing thing, terrible. Uh, there have been a few other things he's voted uh, where he was terrible. Um, uh, he's always been a political hack, is what he's been. And because he then associated himself with Obama, We've given him a better place in history, which, of course, he deserves, but he gets it as a result of being Obama's vice president and nothing more. You know. don't, so. don't you think this is all going to serve to depress the vote, Alex? And, the, you know, unless it's Andrew Yang, they, they're going to have an insider. Everybody there is sort of a government person. Well, yeah, we're not going to give Andrew. Ye we're not going to get Andrew, Andrew Yang, although he is going to give me a thousand dollars a month. So I should like him. He's, <laughs> he's buying my vote, you know. Yeah, I'm going for him. Wasn't it? Uh, I read one thing today that um, uh, Bernie said was that middle class is going to pay more in taxes. Well, he what he was saying was here's what he said uh, uh, that if we have a single payer health care it's going to cost more in taxes. But the amount of money it's going to cost you more in taxes is not going to be as much as you're paying now for health insurance. So really what you're doing is you're getting the better end of the bargain. You're actually saving money on your health insurance. And this way, yeah. every, everybody will be covered. So that's what he said. He, he, and and he, he said, yeah, of course you're going to pay more in taxes, but it's not going to be equivalent to the amount of money you're spending now for, for uh, um, health care. How, uh, how, uh, for instance, Rob, uh, at your job, you get health care, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, but you have to pay for part of it, right? Yes. Yeah. Because most companies say it used to be companies would give it to you and that was it. Now right. you pay part of it. How much? Can I ask you how much you pay uh, for you and your for wife? Me I don't pay for my wife. She has her own. Yeah. My company charges a stipend if you if if your if your significant other wife whatever has a way to get medical insurance but chooses to be on your plan. So it costs you uh, the the double the amount for a couple plus an additional amount. And I think I pay. I want to say I pay. It's like a hundred and change a paycheck or something like that. Yeah. And what do you go get paid twice a month or? Yeah, twice yeah. a month. Okay. Twice a month. So, you know, so that's $2,400 a year. Well, I, let's say your taxes would go up by $1,000. you would be uh, you would be making money. You know, you'd be ahead of the game. Well, it, it would it won't depend. Affect me. Well, so it won't affect me. It would depend a little bit on, on what that coverage is, how good the coverage is. You know, it won't affect you, Bree, because you're going to get nothing because you're not here. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, actually, though, I think I could sign up for it. And when I come back, you know, in the summer for a month, well, do you go get a health do, checkup do, if it's free? But I was. Wait, 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 let me Medicare? ask you, Bree. Bree, do you pay taxes to the United States at all? I file taxes, but I don't. I don't pay them because I don't make enough money. In other words, you don't make enough money in the United States. You make it in Dubai, for instance. No, even I, I make some in the U.S. Because I do online work, mm -hmm. and then I make most of it here. But the U.S. says you have to go above, uh, I think it's $105,000 in order to be taxed. And I don't make above that wait, 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 because a lot of what I get. To, wait a minute, but hmm? tax, taxed for what? I mean, in other words, you'd have to make $105,000. you are getting paid in Dubai, okay? Right. Is that money taxable? No. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, so, it but, is but if do, I go. But, but do you have to pay taxes to Dubai? No, no way. No. There, what? There are no taxes in Dubai. There, there, there. Well, up until a year ago, there were absolutely no taxes at all whatsoever. Now there's five percent VAT. But uh, personal income, no. Well, I'm going to go online right now and look at what the ticket costs to move to Dubai. Because if, <laughs> if I can get a job there and I don't have to pay taxes, then so I. 
You don't and pay And by the way, medical coverage, it, it includes pre existing conditions. So if you come here, Alex, you can get covered. Wow. So, Bree, do you pay into Social Security? No, I don't so, pay into Social Security. Do you have your 20 quarter or 40 quarters in order to collect Social Security when you re, when you retire? Or would you yes. just not be able? Okay, so yeah. you will collect. Uh, right, yeah, and that's another question. I don't know. They keep saying, when do you collect? 62, 65? So it depends know. on your age. Yeah, I've got a. Uh, they tell I get these. I used to get these little newsletters that tell me how much I would get if I retired at yeah, those ages, those. and it's only like a thousand bucks. That's about average. Uh, uh, well, wait a minute. I get what do I get? I get twenty one hundred a month, and then a couple hundred is taken out. I think for various things, so I come out with about nineteen and change. I think it is. Um, um, so it's because you started collecting at 62, Yeah, right? but, but, you know, I kept earning money during that time, all right? I kept earning money during that time, and all that money went to my Social Security, so it kept going up anyway, you know. But if you take early, you get less. So like, I'm going to wait till I'm 66 and a half. You're right. And mine should be somewhere around 2600 a month, I think, or 2700 Well, I say to people— Wait, Alex. Yeah. What? If you if you take your social security, then you cannot earn or. What do you mean? No, Wait, you it, said so. If you take your social security, that means you can't hold a job anymore. No, 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 no. You can no, keep holding. It, no, it, I held a job it. while getting social security. I was at, at Sirius oh, XM okay. and getting social they, security. Do they cut your social security if you make over a certain amount? Over a certain amount, yeah. Well, no, they don't. What happens is they keep vesting into your social security because you're obviously playing paying for social security while you're working so what i took at 62 yeah it would have been less now but it wound up being more because i kept making money you get what i'm saying oh i see okay so uh yeah. i i don't know i say to some people take it at 62 because you know you don't know that you're going to live to be 65 right yeah. uh don't <laughs> whatever right. whatever you do don't don't do the what 72 year bit and get a whole right. bunch more because it's never going to come out right because right you, you'll probably be dead before you've come out even right you know so hmm. yeah if i if i live to be 79 then i will say well i would have made more money if i had taken it at 66 but yeah. i don't know i'm going to make make it to 70 yeah but i don't think i would have made that much more I mean, I'm I'm up there almost at the limit of how much money you get with Social Security, you know. Which I well, quite Alex, one of the reasons yeah. why I moved to, Mal or why I am moving to Malaysia is because the I get a pension plan there, and my employer will match. Oh really? Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So, you know, like I've in Singapore and in Dubai, I've been a combined 13 years, and I don't have any, you know sort of long-term benefit from that. I don't have I don't have anything into Social Security mm -hmm. and I don't have anything into extra into my 401k. So that's why I feel this is a big thing because it'll it'll sort of force well, me to save. You have a pension plan. I have a pension plan which allows me uh, uh, free board and room and board at a uh, bread and breakfast place. A, 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 a pension <laughs> hey, when you, a pension you in... plan, you get it? Mark gets it, right, Mark? We, Bree, when you lived in um, <laughs> when you lived in uh, Singapore, where I know because I used to date a, a woman from Singapore. She had like the CPF fund, which is like our yeah. social security. All right, were you able to pay into that? I, you know, I don't know, Rob. When I first went there, I thought I would only be there for three years, and then back to the states, and then three years became five, six, seven years. You know. <laughs> And so I didn't really think about it. And the other thing is there's something um, – when you go to Singapore, or and I learned it in Singapore, thank goodness, by the time I came to Dubai. And that is when you're an expat in Singapore and you make so much money, the place is so expensive and everything you, – you feel you want to keep up with the Joneses. So you end up spending a lot of money. And they have taxes there. They're not very high. It's only about 10, 14 percent highest. But you just end up spending all your money, and I didn't save, and I, I made a mistake when I was there. I made a lot of mistakes, which I learned by the time I came to Dubai, but still. Yeah. 
Uh, you know, here's the thing I, that, that uh, you know, again, you know, we're kind of keeping away from the discussion that was happening, but they asked the question, how many of you here, uh, when uh, it's time, uh, will uh, get rid of your health plan and, and take, and, and, or if we had a Medicare for all, how many here would drop their, their health plan and take the Medicare for all? And only two of them raised their hand. Yeah. And I went, are you fucking idiots? I mean, do you really like paying for your insurance no. every month? Uh, Alex, like only Bernie. Those co-pays? That's only ridiculous. Bernie. It no, is, no, ridiculous. it was Bernie and it was, uh, it was uh, Cam uh, Camilla no. Harris. No, she Camilla raised her Harris hand. came in later and said she made a mistake. She misinterpreted well, that. Well, I, I don't understand that logic. I mean, if I have a choice between that and paying insurance to some insurance company, I mean, what would you guys do? How about you, Mark? Insurance company or, the, or Medicare for all? As a baseline, I would go for, you know, if you can't afford it, just like I I think it's in Europe where, where there is good, me, you know, with the socialized medicine. Yes, everyone gets uh, health care, but if you want better, then you have to pay for more, a little more. For insurance yeah but i like i get medicare and yeah. i gotta tell you there's nothing wrong with it i mean what i'm not That's, gonna i'm not gonna take it you know yeah. but if you add everybody to it maybe it will go bad well i don't know that it has to you know i mean i talk to people in canada for instance yeah who hate it when people question their health care system because they say it's terrific you know, have you heard this, Mark? Uh, you, you've talked to people from Canada, right, about their health care system. What do they say? Well, I'll put you this way. I'm kind of jealous. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. See? I have cousins in Canada. It wasn't what? so cold. I'd move there. Hmm. Yeah. They only have 35 million people. That's, they brought that up in the debate, remember? Well, the, yeah, but it, but it, we, it, that has we, nothing to do. Has with nothing to do with it because we, 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 we could we, we, we could we could argue that we have three hundred million people, so there's more money to put in there. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So I mean, that whole except notion, we have a Department of Defense. In fact, the fact that's that that's bullshit. We're wasting money on the Department of Defense. But that's what that we Canada like to do in this country. From. That's yeah. what Canada benefits from. We should tax Canada. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is that Canada, uh, with only, <laughs> with, uh, saying they only have 35, 000, uh, 35 million people, the argument back should be, well, then they have less people to pay in, so they should not have as good a health care system. But they do, That's you true. know, and they take great pride in it. And, yeah. and the Brits take great pride in theirs. And, and, and they the, live three years longer than Americans. And by the way, the French are, are very happy with theirs. And the, uh, and the Scandinavian countries. You know, there are only two countries, two um, uh, industrialized nations in the whole world that don't have single-payer health care. And that's the United States, and I was really blown away when I heard this, and China. You would think the, the biggest communist country in the world yes. would have a health care system, but they don't. I have health care in China. You have health care in China? Yep, I do. What do you mean you have it in China? You don't get it from China. Yes, I do. Really? Why do you have health care in China? <laughs> My wife is Chinese. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Oh, all right. And well. when, I, when we were there one time, I got really sick. Yeah. And it's a long story, but I ended up getting a health care card. Oh, really? But supposedly yeah, they, so don't have sing, they don't have single-payer health care there. They don't have, uh, they don't have, um, you know, Chinese Medicare for all. Uh, they're working on it. They want to have it, but they don't yet. You know, so I, I don't know what, maybe, maybe there is some health plan there. But I, all I'm saying is every other country seems to be able to do it, you know. And, and most of the people, if you ask those people in those countries about their health care system, um, they, they're very proud of it. In fact, I have this guy, Ted Randall, radio guy, who I interviewed, who's like 92 now, and he's living in Canada. And I said, so do you get their health care up there? He says, oh, yeah. I said, what do you think of it? He said, let me put it this way. If I didn't have their health care by now, I'd be dead. Hmm. Well, that said it all to me, you know. 
So, I mean, but all I'm saying is that, you know, I, what I like about Bernie, I'll tell you, I don't, I don't think Bernie would be a great candidate, okay? Uh, I think uh, Trump would bully him and do all of that. Uh, I think Kamala would stand up to Trump, okay? If, if we're talking about this as an audition and we want the person who's going to win. But I'll say one thing about Bernie. He's asking the questions that need to be asked. And he's proposing the things that need to be proposed. And whether or not any of them come to pass, the fact that he's, he's put it into the mix is, I think, very important. And that's where he's become, he's a very important candidate. Okay? No. That's, yeah. that's, that's what I have to say about it. But um, anyway. It could be Bernie. Could be. Well, I hope not. I, I don't think Bernie can win. Patrick, who, who do you think of the Democrats that you've seen? Is there anyone there you think could win? Yeah, I think Kamala Harris. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so far she is the strongest. And, um, you know, I did not see Elizabeth Warren, and I haven't seen any clips of her. Um, because, I, I mean, obviously the exchange last night between Harris and Biden was a little bit more popular, I guess, for the news clips. Mm -hmm. um, so I've seen more of that. So I, I don't have an opinion on Warren. But barring that, I think uh, Kamala Harris has it. Well, and you know, let's, let's, let's think of this, uh, and, and I think Rob would probably agree with me on this, that... They once described American Idol as not being a talent show as much as being an audition. Okay? The whole show is based on auditioning. Does that make sense? So if yeah. this last night was the reality show of, that was an audition, I think she passed the audition. You know, I think she That's came... Early. Yeah, but she, but she showed that she could... She had a good set Go of pipes. Toe to toe. She, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm hearing, right? But if that's the, it's a long time yeah. to go. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's an audition process, and I think she, at this point, of all the candidates I've seen, is the best one to go up against Trump. We're talking about winning now, and we're also talking about cosmetics. She's a pre she's pretty good looking, you know. Yes. She's very attractive. Nothing unappealing Willie about Brown her. Willie Brown thought so. Uh, Willie Brown thought so. Yes. Uh, well, she was well, his protege. Was she was his protege. Yeah. And mistress, apparently. It, well, that's the rumor. But I, I, you know, I have my questions about Willie Brown personally, uh, but I have to admire his taste. Okay. Uh, she, she's <laughs> a very. Trump can't use that against her because look at him. Oh, they, they, they wouldn't even start. Oh, Don't no even use. start with him, uh, her on that. But here's the thing. Don't use anything. Well, well here's the thing, though, that uh, Elizabeth Warren has the ideas. She is. She articulates her 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 positions beautifully, okay, and is very smart, and I admire that. But cosmetically, she doesn't have a chance. And, and you got to add that voice. into it. We're living, yep, yeah, and the voice. We're living in a day and age of cosmetics. I mean, do you, 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 do you, Patrick, you look like you're agreeing with me. It, uh, what Rob said, the voice. That that is the Gosh, thing. I, <laughs> I, I uh, when I hear her, it's Hillary, and it, it's grating the the voice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and Elizabeth Warren, you have to admit, is a smart, very smart woman. I mean, there's no question about it, you know. But uh, I, we got to talk about who can beat Trump. And that's, that's the big question. Marianne and Williamson. Marianne Williamson. <laughs> you sent me something here, Patrick? I sent you the clip that I was talking about. Oh, okay. I'll watch it later. What? It, there was one other thing she said, is she said, uh, we're not going to beat Trump with all of these plans that all of you guys have been talking about. Yeah. And that floored me, too. So, yeah, she, she's the one that I like. Just because she's goofy. 
Oh yeah, she she. I hope she's no in a plan. to keep it interesting. Okay, all right. You know, as I mean, we got to you know, uh, 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 only one person is going to be the American Idol. Okay. Uh, but uh, and, and it's not always the most talented one. It's the good-looking one. Yeah. It's it's a soap opera, and it's a you know it's it's a popularity contest. I don't care which one of these people gets nominated, as long as that one person can beat Trump. That's it. At this point, that's the only the only consideration. And I think you have to take cosmetics into it. I think you have to take in. Uh, I mean, she's very glib. She's smart. She's sharp. I mean, I think Kamala Harris is 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 the best at this point, the best possible nominee. Now, here's the terrible part about uh, oh look, uh, uh, our uh, uh, our friend from Dubai is sideways now. Uh, put yourself in portrait mode in uh, in uh, landscape mode. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, anyway. Uh, I, uh, you know, it's it, it's still well too early. I agree with you, uh, Rob. In fact, it's a year and a half till there's an election, or maybe a little less than that. What are we doing even having debates now? You know, that's what well, I really... You got to get rid of 25 people or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's what I, uh, I wrote that thing that I sent to NBC that was on my Facebook page in which I said... That 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 um, uh, you know this is you're running this thing like a reality show. You're running this thing like a football game, uh, and 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 you're you're toying around with what is in fact a very sacred practice of trying to determine who's going to set the moral compass for this country. And at this time, it's more important than ever. And what they what they did is is. Is ridiculous. I mean, it's too early. You know, we really shouldn't even start doing any of this until January at the earliest. And yet we're hey, still. Yeah. I think you have to think of all those Democrats and you have to imagine them in your largest stadium in your city. Will they be able to pack that and will they be able to stand up there and deliver a speech? Because that's what Trump does. He gets uh, you know fifty thousand people to come and see him, and that really that you image. Know, it's, that a, it's, a, it's, it's the Donald Trump show. You know yeah, exactly. They all and come I think to Bernie see. Sanders can do that. I don't see any other candidate on the Democratic side that can do that. Well, we don't know because they haven't been put, been put in that position yet. We have seen Bernie in that position because that was the nature of, uh, of being one of just two people running and getting people to turn out for you. Uh, I think if Kamala Harris were running, she would start filling up stadiums. I think that what they go to see is they go to see Trump's comedy act. He's, it's almost like he's on tour with a comedy act. And that's it. You know, plain and simple. And I agree with you. That's, that's why he gets people to fill those stadiums. But, you, you know, filling stadiums is much different than filling in a square on a ballot, okay? And that's well, you got to be entertaining. What? She's not entertaining. I don't that's... know that you've got to be entertaining. Mm -hmm. uh, I, think that, uh, I think that what happened with Trump is he got a lot of free publicity because he was such a yep. buffoon. And, and uh, so everybody, you know, the press elected him. As much as he hates the press, he got all the more free press than anybody ever got running for president. Uh, and yeah. and uh, you know, uh, I just he's going to say she's just another government hack. Uh, well, you could say that, and then you could say I'd fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean. Uh, I, I think it'd be very interesting to have a uh, debate between he and Kamala Harris and see if he can go through the whole two hours without trying to grab her pussy. Yeah, and I think I think the the rules have changed and the, and the and both sides now now realize that when when, uh, 
you know, when Hillary was running against Donald Trump, it was more, you know, she was trying to keep to the old way, the old school. She didn't come out and, and get as brazen as Trump did. I think the gloves are going to be off a little bit more now on both sides because they're seeing what works, what wins, and it's changing the tenor of of a campaign. So I think regardless of who runs, I don't think they're going to be as timid as Hillary was. Somebody's rattling their mic. Please stop that or your phone or whatever. Cause it's kind of a little annoying. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, it's, it's far too early and I just think that it's, um, it, but, it, but I, I'm happy to see that, Kamala Harris at least made it a, 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 a fighting match here. That, that it isn't just, let's give it to Joe, okay? Uh, that it's not going to be that easy for him. And I think this may have actually sealed his fate because he, he showed himself early on to be very vulnerable. Yes, Patrick? Well, now you're going to have the issue of Kamala versus Elizabeth. Because I think Elizabeth Warren is the female version of Biden. So, if you... Well, she's the female version of Bernie. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're keeping Bernie out of it because I don't think he's going to make it. I think it's going to be the women that come out. And it's going to be an interesting fight between Warren and Kamala Harris. Yeah, and I, I, that's that's going to be interesting when that happens because how do two women fight each other? And, Ooh, and, you I'll know, pay for that. What, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what if yeah. what if Bernie were to make a deal with Warren, where they go together? You know, or what if they start tag teaming? You know. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if if the two women are going go up against each other, what is going to be the result of that? You know, are you mean, they, will are, it be civil? Well, it, are they going to be overly civil because it's another woman? I, I we've never seen that before. You know, uh, you we didn't see it right. with Hillary. We didn't see another woman going up and arguing with Hillary. So it'd be interesting to see how they treat that kind of situation. Well, and and if Cory Booker had been on her night, uh, Kamala Harris would not have been able to play her race card. Because she, she wouldn't have been the only one. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah. No, she definitely had an advantage that way. But you know. Whoa. And and thank God last night I think there was only one person that spoke Spanish. So you know I mean <laughs> it was uh, anyway. Okay. Oh hey listen it's time to play the uh, old theme song here. Hey listen thanks to all of you for joining us tonight because uh, uh, it was getting a little slow there but we managed to pull it out. Uh, and I want to thank Rob, as always. Rob, you're wonderful. Uh, and, of course, Charlie, thank you. Allison, thank you. I know it's the first time for you, and you maybe didn't know how to jump in, but uh, it's, we were glad to have you here. Uh, Tony, thank you. Thanks also to the lovely and attractive Mark Thorner, who call more often, Mark. Jesus yeah. Christ, once a year? Come on. Yeah, you call next week, Mark. Yeah. Anyway, and Patrick, thank you, and thanks to Bree as well in uh, Dubai. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye back. Okay, there they go. That's the citizen panel, and I would I would thank the one other person who was here tonight, but uh, fuck him. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll be back again uh, tomorrow night. Or not tomorrow night, Tuesday night, um, right after um, uh, the. Uh, uh, the the exchange with uh, Damian Chaplin uh, will be back. We'll be here at 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her why wasn't she here? It's Friday night. And also tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend. <laughs>